Good morning, everybody. My name is Glitterbots, and you are watching Anime Palooza. It's time for another episode of Anime Mondays, the show where I let you know all the anime that I've watched for the week and let you know my thoughts if it's good, if it's crap. I tried really hard to check some shows off my currently watching list, and while I tried, I ultimately failed. Though I did take a big chunk out of some of them, I didn't complete them, which sort of was beside the point. I did find a gem, and I'll let you know about that at the very end because I like to save the best for last. But for now it's time to talk about anime and this week because it's Monday on Anime Mondays. I should make my own theme music but that would require using GarageBand which I apparently suck at. Let's start with the episode 3 list of the week. We'll start off with Orenshi no Furojijo episode 3. And again, four minutes long, not a whole lot to talk about. This week, along with a merman in the bathtub, there was a mer octopus in the bathtub? What do you call a half man, half octopus? A mocktopus? Shit, I think I'm in love. It was really funny though. Again, cute episode. Not a whole lot to talk about since it was only four minutes long. I love it still. I just want more of it. More. More mermen. More mocktopuses. Mocktopi. More. Just shove everybody in the bathtub. Next on the list of three, I have Bonjour Koyaji Patisserie. Episodes two and three. I found out when it airs, it comes up late Friday nights on Crunchyroll. This week we got to learn a little more about all the guys, all the teacher guys and the one main dude. There's the angry dude with the red hair and then three teacher boys who are going to all be in our reverse harem. And they paired off with one another to make a dessert. Of course, our lead girl gets paired with the angry red-haired dude, who is apparently the son of a very famous patissiere. He doesn't want her to do jack shit. But, you know, she's like, well, we have to work together. And he's like, shut the fuck up, you dumb bitch, and let me stir this custard. Eventually, they work together. And we get to have a little bit more comic relief with, well, one of the teachers in particular, the blonde French dude. <laughs> you know how last time I said I didn't have a favorite character? Well, now I kind of have two. I do like the angry red-haired kid, and I like the blonde French patissiere because he is hysterical. And, I mean, who doesn't love a dumb blonde French guy? Bonjour is still funny. It just still sucks that it's only five minutes an episode. Wish it were longer again, but you know, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. If you like true reverse harems, definitely for you. If not, it's probably best that you skip on by it because you probably won't get any enjoyment at all out of this show. Third on the three list is episode three of Wolf Girl and Black Prince. As you can see, I do a weekly review on this show, and if you would like to hear my thoughts in detail about Episode 3, please click on this lovely annotation box. It will take you to my video, and you can sit there and watch me make kissy faces and hold a stuffed dog for six minutes, and who doesn't want to see that? Akatsuki no Yona, Episode 3. Yeah, this is pretty much my favorite show of the fall season. I'll set it once, and I'll say it again. It is still raining champ. Apparently, it is now called Yona of the Dawn, which means it skipped from the A's to the Y's in the Crunchyroll alphabetical simulcast list. So in case you are wondering, that's where it went all the way to the back next to the show I'm going to talk about next. However, this week, remember how I said last time that I really would like another flashback to see how she got to have short hair and was with all those random dudes? Well, they don't even show the short hair or the random dudes at all. Instead, they just show her hanging out with Hawk, I remembered his name, who is the dark haired dude. And he's basically pulling her around like a doll, leading her through the woods so they can get away from the blonde dude who took over life. And it was pretty much an extended flashback to when Hawk became her bodyguard for the first time and also when Hawk, Yona, and the blonde dude, Su Young? Young? Sue somebody. I suck at names. You're lucky I got Hawk. Basically an extended flashback to when the three of them were kids. They were playing around in the snow and they all got sick and they all had to be quarantined in a room together. They're all holding hands in their little futons and it was stupid cute and it just sucks because Yoda is still incredibly in love with the blonde dude even though he's the giantest dick of all time. 
giantest. He's the biggest dick of all time. So it was a really cute flashback episode and for a girl who does not like any kind of flashbacks whatsoever, that is saying something. Akatsuki no Yona, or now Yona of the Dawn, airs on Crunchyroll on Tuesdays. You can also now find episode one on Funimation. Your Lion April, episode three. This is the last of the threes, I promise. Also, this could now possibly be called April is Your Lie. Again, what's with the switching with the A's and the Y's? Um, pick a title and stick to it. I'm gonna stick with Your Lion April. This episode was all about the blonde girl trying to get the dude with the glasses to be her accompanist for the second round of her little concours. He's all like, I can't play the piano, I can't hear the music. Clearly his mom's death ingrained something in his brain that made him pretty much just go nuts. But the blind girl's also nuts, so her, along with the other female best friend, have come together to plaster sheet music all over this dude's life, trying to get him to accompany her for the next round of her little tournament. While it works, he eventually caves and gives in. The piece is really difficult, too, and I'm just like, for middle school kids to pull this off, it's gonna be one hell of a playing time. He's definitely, definitely in love with the blonde girl now. And she, I don't know if she loves him, but she definitely likes him as a friend and wants to see him at his fullest potential. So that's good. At the beginning, it was kind of weird. I thought maybe I had accidentally skipped an episode, but there's only three. I know I watched episode two, so it felt like something was missing at the beginning, but by the end, everything kind of worked itself out. So it was a pretty solid episode. Check out Your Lie in April, Crunchyroll, and Hulu on Thursdays. On Thursdays, and you won't be disappointed. I'm not disappointed yet, except I still don't like the art style. It's not growing on me like I thought it might, but there's only so much you can do about that. That was all of the seasonal stuff I watched for the week. The next is a little bit older, trying to cut through some of my backlog, but like I said, gem at the end, so hold on. How could I possibly forget about the gem that's going to be at the beginning though? I completed watching Hunter x Hunter 2011 episodes 41 through 50. You can find my Hunter x Hunter review of these episodes on Super Shonen Saturdays number 9, which you can watch by clicking this second lovely annotation. <laughs> I'm a little freaked out right now by these episodes and you'll definitely understand why if you watch the video, but it's weird to see characters who you never would think would turn out to be a certain way turn out to be a certain way and my mind's kind of blown. Please go check out my review, recap, it's not really a review, it's more like me trying to be funny and do a recap at the same time so if you don't want to watch it for some reason you can just read this or watch this apparently. I love doing Super Shonen Saturdays, it's a whole lot of fun and I get exposed to a bunch of anime I probably would not have watched in the marathoning way otherwise so Hunter x Hunter 2011 go now because you won't regret it. It's fantastic. I mean, you don't even have to watch my video. Just go watch the series because it's great. Next, I finished off episode five of Rose and Maiden 2013. This is that Zurich Spulen, insert German word I can't really pronounce here. I looked at this for a couple of minutes to see if the picture quality was as bad as the first four episodes on the DVDs. And now that I'm actually sitting down and watching it, it is still kind of bad, but it's not as bad as the first disc, so I don't know. This was an episode about Suiginto, and we learned that she has a human familiar who got sucked into the end field by that crazy seventh doll who just comes up out of nowhere and starts starting trouble like a big bitch. So I kind of like Suiginto. I've always liked her. I thought she was a little badass, a little like gothy, like Lolita doll, and I was like, yeah. I was like, you the shit even though you know first series not gonna spoil it but kind of different from what she is now it was an okay episode I did try to watch a little bit more of the dub it is still terrible stay far away from it Lucy Christian plays Shinku which is an odd choice and just it doesn't work I mean she could have at least tried to do a fake British accent or something and it's just bad so Watch the subtitles if you're going to watch this show. I'm still on the fence about whether I really like it enough to actually recommend it to people. It'll get finished eventually, but it didn't this week. 
Carnival. Carnival? Carnival. It's spelled incorrectly however you want to look at it. And I watched episodes four through nine, which ends up the first Blu-ray disc of the Funimation release. <laughs> I'm on the fence about this show. It is gorgeous to look at. If you want to watch it on mute and not give a shit about trying to figure out what's going on and what's happening, you'll like it. The colors are really beautiful. It is just gorgeous. The people have rainbow eyes. I just want to sit there and stare at them for hours upon hours at a time. Now, when you try to figure out what's going on in the actual plot of the show, it's kind of a big hot mess. It's really slow and then it's really fast and nothing really makes too much sense. The English dub is fantastic though. My voice actor husband, Christopher Bevins, who apparently is like a super big deal and I didn't even know. I was like, ooh, this dude who plays Yogi, he's so great. Oh god, he's like everything. Everything. Fucking love him. Fantastic job. J. Michael Tatum is in this. Vic Mignogna is in it. Oh my god, just everybody. There's so many damn characters and that's another minus for this show. There's so many fucking characters you can't keep track of them, but there are so many characters that everybody in the universe seems to make an appearance in Carnival. And it's still not about a carnival, it's still about a circus. The plot is very odd. Like, it tries to be this weird alienish thing and then... There are these monsters and cannibal zombies with people who are alive. People like t they get killed or maybe tor are tortured or experimented on. It is just weird. I'm not gonna lie. Every time I tried to turn on a new episode, I would like doze off like in the middle of the episode. I was waiting for videos to render, shit to upload to YouTube because when that's going on, then I can actually, you know, watch anime as opposed to, like, constantly working on editing stuff. And I just, I kept dozing off. It's really kind of boring. Sort of. I mean, once I stayed awake, it was a little more interesting, but then it got really confusing. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about Carnival. But I'm glad I got through a whole Blu-ray disc without falling asleep through the episodes and I actually stayed awake and could watch them. So I don't know if I would recommend it to anyone. It's just a very pretty show. So like I said, watch it on mute. You miss the great English dub, but it won't confuse you. And if you just like to look at pretty things, like I could wallpaper this room in Carnival Wall Scrolls and probably have a different character in every single one of them and never get bored of looking at it because the character designs and the colors are just amazing. This show just kind of blows. And finally, my super cute favorite show of the week. I watched episodes one through four of Kaicho Wa Made Sama, or just Made Sama for the US release. And it turns out I had actually seen episode one a long time ago. So it wasn't like I actually had to start a new one to add to my list. I could actually plow on through a little bit more of it. Time to have the JC Staff fangirl moment of the week. Made Sama is done by JC Staff and it is an adorable, so far, little romance between this girl named Misa, I must like her because I can remember her name, and a boy named Usui and she is like headstrong, she's super independent, she's like student council president in a school that's mostly boys and she likes to, you know, boss him around, beat him up, good for her. I love her, she's a great protagonist, but her family is really poor and in order to help pay the bills, she has to work at a maid cafe. Now it's not like she's lowering herself to work at this job that she doesn't like. She does enjoy the job, but I mean, she has to be this tough girl at school and then she has to be like, yes master, what would you like written on your rice omelet when she goes to work? So you see that there. Well, this kid named Usui, who's one of the more popular guys in the school, he comes to her maid cafe and finds her out. So the whole series is pretty much based upon him trying to keep her secret of her working in the maid cafe, but he's kind of like in love with her or teases her enough that, you know, he should be in love with her and she doesn't know how she feels about him. I, she pretty much, yeah, she pretty much likes him. She's not going to admit it though because you know she's big and tough and independent. This show is super cute. 
super cute, which begs the question why I did not watch it and finish it years ago when I started it. I don't even remember starting it. Like I went to go put it on my anime list and I was like, oh, I started this already. Who knew? But it is adorable and JC Staff is once again turning out another romance that is stupid cute. I can't, I can't see JC Staff the fangirl, the studio snobs coming out in me again. It's adorable. It is not like Pet Girl Sakura So or like Golden Time. It's more comedic. It's more like a rom-com than anything else. So if you didn't like the serious parts of those shows, you'll probably like this one better even though it's a little bit older. Maid Sama is licensed by Sentai. I've been watching it on Hulu subtitled. I think it has a dub. And hopefully during Right Stuff's Christmas sale, they're going to put it on sale for really cheap so I can buy it. And that's it for this week's Anime Mondays. If you are playing along with my backlog challenge, which remind me to link my blog post where I talk about it in the down bar below, I am currently watching 252 anime. I did not finish any, but I didn't add any new ones either. And I've completed 40 anime this year. Totals are exactly the same from last week, even though I did get some chunks washed of some older anime as well as keeping up with my seasonal stuff. So what's your favorite show of the fall season so far? I mean we're three weeks in, almost a month in for some of them. Let me know down in the comments below what you've been checking out and what you like. If you have a recommendation of something I might like to watch, please leave it down below as well and it will be featured in a future episode of Anime Mondays. How hyped up for Halloween are you? Let's talk about it because I love Halloween. And if you have a Halloween anime you want to recommend to me, let me know because I'd be all about watching that this week. Anyway, that's enough rambling from me. I hope you're having a great, great week. And until next time, love your faces. Like half my thumbnails are me going like this. Like, shh, be quiet. I need to get some better ideas. I don't know what the fuck just happened there. <laughs> Awkward silence, because my brain just shut down. Because you know, giantess is a female giant, but giantist is not a word. Or possibly a giant crossed with a scientist, which this is neither and makes no sense.